Hi, I'm Mike Thompson. This summer, we took Alex to the Crayola Experience in Orlando, and it was a blast. I never thought I could have so much fun at a place like that. So, for Alex's fifth birthday, we're going to have our own Crayola Experience. One of his gifts will be this spin art machine. They had a very industrial, limited capability version of these in Orlando, and I decided that I could make one of my own. And so let me show you how I did it. Unlike the commercial version of spin art, this thing actually melts the crayons for an awesome 3D circular piece of art. I did a ton of R&D and made a couple of versions along the way, testing each critical element by itself as I went. This test was to prove that the belt drive and the first gen hot end worked. I can't remember where the motor came from, but it's now powered by a laptop power supply that first runs through a DC converter to give me 6 volts. The crayons are melted with a 40 watt ceramic heating element intended for a 3D printer. And I limited it to 6 volts as well because I calculated that I didn't need anywhere near full power. That feed tube on the top is just rolled paper for now. And the motor was controlled with a lab power supply while the heater was controlled with the foam cutter power supply. Now I first tried a belt driven wooden table that rode on bearings. It worked, but it was so loud because of all the contact points and I thought this was unacceptable. So it was back to the digital drawing board and headed towards direct drive. With the hot end working and with the belt drive abandoned, my next test was with the direct drive motor and quarter inch acrylic table. That worked perfectly and then it was time to get the mast and arm functional. And here's my new speed controller in my 3D yellow box. The problem with this setup was that the drops tended to wander around since I didn't have a nozzle on the bottom of the block. This test shows how the multimeter is hooked up to measure the temperature of the hot end. I tried really hard not to use an Arduino with temperature feedback and I ended up, make, I ended up making it work quite well by varying the voltage of the converter board and maintaining around 200 degrees. A closed loop system is one of those add-ons for later I think. Machining the hot end and nozzle was probably the most rewarding part of this project because I love machining things, especially aluminum. And this was one of the major elements of the project that had to work. It's got holes for the heater, feed tube, nozzle, flow control, thermocouple, and the last two of which are for future upgrades. This nozzle started life as a rectangular block and now it puts the wax exactly where it's wanted. And here's the completed hot end with the second gen feed tube screwed in place. The four roll pins will suspend it inside the head unit. This head unit was designed for, but only print number two. This one was enlarged to provide a greater air gap inside and was designed to support the hot end from both sides for symmetry. Because my last two adjustable positioning one warped after a while because of the heat. The arm assembly allows the head to swing and turning the bolt here in the back allows the arm to adjust the radial position have the head in and out for fine tuning so that the wax drops right in the center of the middle of the paper. A bolt pulls the head in and a spring on the bolt pushes it back out. Now the top pops on just like so. Vents in the bottom and top allow for natural convection cooling. And then the paper goes in between these little lugs in the edge of the spin table and they're drafted two degrees outward so that the paper stays put. And I reused my first gen splatter guard which was heated and bent around a form I made and it's now supported by this yellow bowl shaped thing which is laser cut quarter inch birch. This test was mostly successful but things splattered when the drops were placed off axis so I had to laser a splatter rim here for the outer inch of the splatter guard and that contains all the splattering now. In preparation for the birthday party, we peeled 38 boxes of crayons, and after the first two boxes, I needed a better way. So I invented this little label slitter that just takes a regular utility blade, and it makes peeling a snap. Uh, but it's still no fun to do. So here's the final test before painting. And uh, if you'll hang with me for a minute, you can see how it works from start to finish. I'm going to speed it up 5x though for the sake of the video. I've also enlarged my control box and added a switch to control the heater power independently. That way I can control my flow rate and keep the motor running uh, with the heater off during cool down. I typically break several crayons and mix the colors. A single crayon doesn't create things that are as interesting and I typically limit the total volume of wax to two crayons, like they do with the Crayola Experience. But there you only get to choose two whole ones. 
and their machines don't allow for position control, flow control, or directional control, just speed. Oh, and by the way, the base is uh, 3 quarter inch pine plywood and the back plate is 3 eighths birch. The mast is a 4x4 painted gray. And how about that? An abstract tree. I was intending to control everything through an Arduino, but due to the currents involved, rapid speed and direction changes, I decided against it and went with the speed controller. Anyway, here it is in its birthday deliverable form, and I think Alex is absolutely going to love it. I've been playing with it for the past two weeks while I perfected everything, and I gotta say, it's so much fun. If you ever get the chance to go to Crayola Experience, I highly recommend it. Well, someday I'll post updates about this, I'm sure, but for now, we're gonna have fun with it at the birthday party. I can't believe Alex is gonna be five. Happy birthday, Bubba. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm Mike Thompson, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.